Wow, that was close. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. So today, instead of cutting down a tree, we're actually gonna be building a couple of trees. See, my kid's school asked me if I could build 10 trees out of plywood. So of course I said yes. This is the perfect opportunity for me to use my Shaper Origin. So today we're gonna build two trees using the Shaper Origin. So let's get started. So some of you might be asking, what the heck is a Shaper Origin? Well, it's a handheld CNC machine router that's perfect for shops that may not have the space for a full-size CNC machine. Is this a beginning woodworking tool? Heck no, this is a luxury item that might be a good alternative to the CNC machine. So what are we gonna be using this tool for? Well, as you can see right here, here's one of the two trees that I've already created. Now, each one of these trees took me about four hours to create. And I need to make 10 of these trees. There's five different designs of trees, so I need to make two of each design. And in making my first two trees, I made a lot of mistakes. So hopefully we're gonna learn from those mistakes and knock these next two trees out much quicker. But in order to do that, we need to take a look at the Shaper Origin and talk about how it works. So this is the Shaper Origin. As you can see, there's a touch screen on it that allows you to maneuver your router when you're making your cuts. If we look at the right hand side of the router, you can see there's a green button. This allows you to lower your bit. And on the opposite side, there's an orange button and this retracts the bit. If we look at the back of the Shaper, it's got a camera and a light that allows it to track itself as you're moving it across your workpiece. So how does this handheld CNC machine able to position itself and know where to make the cuts? Well, it has everything to do with this Shaper tape. So the shaper tape looks like little dominoes and each one of these dominoes has a different number of dots in different positions. And these dominoes are what allow this machine to track itself as you're making your cuts. And this is where I made my first mistake when creating my first two trees. You see, the shaper tape isn't very cheap. Each one of these rolls costs $22. So I tried to use the shaper tape as sparingly as possible. I was placing the shaper tape approximately 10 to 12 inches apart, hoping that I could use as little of this tape as possible. The problem was the shaper was losing its orientation and making miscuts along the way. Now there are things you can purchase like the shaper workstation that allow you to not have to use that shaper tape. However, this is in no way large enough for this project. So I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and lay down some shaper tape on this plywood in smaller increments. So let's get started and place down some shaper tape. So now that we have our shaper tape laid down, we need to scan our workspace. This is where the shaper is going to take a picture of the entire sheet of plywood and those dominoes so that it knows exactly where it is when it's making its cuts. Now in this process, the shaper is simply taking a bunch of pictures of your workspace and stitching all those pictures together using the dominoes as reference. Now once the shaper has created a workspace with all these images, it's now time to download the SVG file of the tree that we want to create so that we can place it onto this workspace. So this is the SVG file for the tree that we're going to be downloading today. As you can see, this is a very simple design similar to the tree I've already created. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go into great detail of how you place an image onto your workspace as I have a video that fully explains this entire process. This video is more about how we can use the Shaper tool for projects that we may not be able to do with normal tools. So now I'm gonna select the SVG of the tree that we wanna place on our workspace. Once I have that selected, it's gonna place it onto our workspace and we can adjust the height and the width so that it perfectly fits our plywood. And for this project, since we're placing this SVG file on a piece of four x eight Baltic birch plywood, I wanna make this image 46 inches wide by 90 inches high. So now that we've placed the image of the tree onto our plywood, we now need to do a Z-touch. And this is where the bit lowers until it hits the surface of the plywood and then retracts. This is gonna give a height dimension to our router. Now that the shaper knows the height of that router bit relative to the top of the plywood, we can begin to start thinking about making our cuts. Before we make our cuts, we need to make sure that we attach the dust collection system to our machine. If we don't have a dust collection system, this thing will clog up. Secondly, we need to think about the depth of cut. And in this example, we're gonna go a quarter of an inch deep. Now the reason I'm only going a quarter of an inch deep is because anything beyond that seems to be a little bit too aggressive for this machine. When I created my first two trees, I was going up to three quarters of an inch thick and this was just really bogging down the machine. And that's another lesson I learned by making my first two trees. We're just gonna make a quarter of an inch pass on this entire tree. Then we're gonna use that as a template to use a flush trim bit. So let's get started on making this quarter inch cut so that we can start using this thing as a template. So 
So hopefully you can see this rough layout of the tree that we're going to create. Now since this will be a template to make the other tree, we want to cut away a lot of the waste. Now to remove the waste, I could either do this a couple of ways. The first two trees I made, I used a jigsaw and this was quite time consuming. So I thought since this tree has got some straight lines in it, why don't I use my track saw? Since there's these long runs of straight lines, I can simply line up my track saw and make a cut really close to that line. I'll use the track saw to get as close as I can to the corners of each one of those branches. Then I'll clean up those corners with the jigsaw. So I got about as much as I think I can get with the track saw. Now there's some curved areas that I just couldn't get very close with the track saw. So now it's time to break out the jigsaw and sort of clean this up. Now we don't have to have this perfect yet as we're gonna be using a flush trim router to clean out all that waste. And with the jigsaw, I'll be able to remove large pieces of waste from this tree. The jigsaw will also allow me to get into some of these corners. So now it's just a matter of working my way around the tree and cleaning up all those edges. So that may seem like it was a heck of a lot of work, but I'm here to tell you after making my first two trees, that was a heck of a lot easier than trying to use a jigsaw around the exterior of each tree. So right about now, you're probably asking, why in the heck didn't you just use a jigsaw to begin with? Well, if you've ever used a jigsaw, you know that can really cause a lot of tear out. And these things are going into school and they need very smooth edges. So that's why we used the shaper to make that template for the first tree. And that shaper left a very smooth edge that we can rest our bearing on a flush trim bit and make sure that all these edges are exactly the same. So that's what we're gonna do next. And for this process, I'm gonna be using a palm router. I've got a flush trim bit in here with a top mounted bearing. This is the bearing that's gonna ride against that edge. So we're gonna make some man glitter here and run that router around the edge of the tree. This is gonna clean up the first tree so that it's perfectly flush. It's also gonna create a lip on the second tree so that we can make a second pass with the router and do the same thing to the second tree. And with that dusty job, we have our first tree done. So I can remove the shaper tape and put that tree to the side. Now with that first tree done, let's take a closer look at what's left on that second tree. So if we look at our second tree, you can see there's just a little lip that we have to remove. So we can rest our bearing on the cut that we just made to remove the rest of the waste material. So what I'm gonna do is place a couple of two by fours underneath the tree to raise it up a little bit. This is gonna make sure when we go around with the router, it's not gonna eat into that styrofoam. So let's get to cutting and finish this tree up. Well, that'll do it for that second tree. So let's go stack that tree up next to the other two and see how it looks. Well, that's going to do us for today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed following me along as I made my third and fourth tree. It's really starting to look like a forest in here. Now, I know not everybody has a shaper origin, but I think it's always nice to see some of these new technologies and how they work. So I hope you enjoyed seeing it in action as well. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. Until next time, take care as always.